Let's talk SQL Server AG patching. If you're looking for a way to streamline those updates and minimize downtime, especially when dealing with availability groups, then this video series is going to be for you. I'll be discussing automating the patching of SQL Server AGs using Ansible for a more efficient and less error prone process compared to uh, manual methods. If you're completely new to Ansible, uh, stick around until the end. I have a couple of free resources you can swipe uh, over at my website to get started. First, we're going to cover what rolling updates are. As you may not be familiar with those, if you're if you're just running uh, single instances uh, in your environment, then rolling updates may be a new uh, concept. They are used to update AGs and even uh, fell over clustered instances. They are typically performed to reduce downtime. Notice I didn't say a zero downtime, uh, but it, they are used to uh, minimize that. Usually the following steps are performed. These are the manual steps that uh, you as a DBA usually perform whenever you're doing rolling updates. Uh, after you've done your pre-checks, your pre-checks should include a database backup system and your user databases. And it would also be a good idea to make sure that those backups are in a, a good state, even try to restore, do a test restore. And then also make sure that your integrity checks are clean. First, you want to make sure you are doing integrity checks on both your system and user databases and make sure that uh, there's those are used to make sure that there's no corruption in those databases. And third, you've tested it. You've tested the patch thoroughly in non prod environments like a test dev and QA environments. And then fourth, make sure that your users have been notified of the upcoming maintenance window. Because once you once you do the failover, if you do a failover part of your maintenance window, then all connections will be severed to that SQL Server instance and then brought up on the new replica. So this again, this is a very high level uh, overview of the 10 step process in the rolling updates we'll get into a specific scenario in a second and that scenario we'll use throughout the the this series of videos so first you're going to validate the state of the availability group you'll want to ensure it's in sync and healthy before making any changes uh, you definitely don't want to go and be making any installing any patches to an unhealthy AG that's just going to add on to the issues you you're going to have. Two is to make sure that the quorum has been configured correctly and is healthy. This is to make sure that you're not going to run into random failovers while you're trying to patch a specific replica. Three is to set synchronous secondary replicas to manual failover. Again, this is just to make sure that you're not going to have any failovers until you specify that you need a failover while you're installing that patch. And then step four is to update secondary replicas first. Uh, any replicas that reside in remote locations or other data centers separate from the primary replica should be updated first. Step five is to set the synchronous secondary replica, that's a mouthful, to automatic failover if it was set to automatic previously. If it was already set to manual, then of course you don't want to switch that to automatic unless that was your goal. Step six is to wait until the synchronization state is synchronized. You want to make sure that that's the case for all of the secondary replicas that were just patched. Um, so you could have multiple, you could have four, six, how many ever replicas you have. Make sure that anyone that you've patched has returned back to the synchronized state. And step seven is fell over the AG to a, a secondary replica. This is the step to where this is why you notify your end users because you're, you're severing all of those connections whenever you do a failover, although quick, it will happen. There's some uh, discussion. If you go out to Brent Ozar's uh, website or if you go to SQL Server updates, he has a link at the very top that kind of shows some other steps that you can take while patching really good steps just really depends on your environment be sure to check that out because there's some suggestions there that says you may want to stop after you've patched all of your secondaries before you patch your primary and let some time basically burn in time for that patch to discover any issues or anything there before you patch your 
primary. But in our case, we're going to go ahead and go to step seven and then fill over uh, the AG to a secondary. And then step eight would be update the old primary replica instance. Now you're going to do it the same way. You want to switch it to manual failover so that you you want to follow the same steps that you just took on your other secondaries because it, it is now a secondary. So switch it to manual failover and then go ahead and uh, patch. Step nine, and this is optional, is to return to the original primary if required once the synchronization state is synchronized. And step 10 is to uh, validate the state of each SQL Server instance and of the AG. So you want to make sure that all those instances come back online after restart, SQL Server has started, and you also want to check that build version to make sure that it matches what you expected based on that patch level that you just did. And then make sure that the AG dashboard, you can use T-SQL scripts, PowerShell, whatever, but just make sure that that AG is in a good state. Uh, some other things to keep in mind is to re-enable monitoring. So if you've disabled monitoring for this AG, for this maintenance window, go ahead and turn that back on and then let your users know that maintenance is complete so that they can get in and, and start testing. Of course, this process is highly dependent on how your AG has been configured, but generally, overall, these are the 10 steps of a rolling update. So that's a lot of steps. The challenges of manual patching, maybe uh, they're, they're time consuming. This could be hours of tedious work with no shortcuts, especially if you don't have any scripting uh, done. If you're doing everything through Management Studio and then remote desktop into the machines, and then you're having to keep track of the, the failovers and fellbacks. What was your primary when you first started? Making sure that the build is correct. So just a lot of uh, tedious work that you're going to have to do. There are some pros, though, of manual patching such as greater control in specific scenarios. You, you may be familiar, you've, you've probably done this for years and you're familiar with all of your steps and you've documented your checklist inside of maybe Excel. It's just a manual checklist that you go through every time. There, there's no initial setup overhead. You're directly observing uh, what's happening at each and every step. And you've got to restart and then, you, of course, you're going to go and uh, try to get back into that machine and then you're going to check to make sure that sql server is online so you're directly observing uh, and you understand the the process but there's several cons a higher risk of errors some other dba may not be as thorough as you are so if you hand that off to another dba you would expect it to be done exactly the same way that you've been doing it for years but that's not always the case there is a potential for longer downtime. So you're having to orchestrate all of the installations, the failovers, the restarts and everything. So you may get busy or distracted on something else after a restart. And then that time that stops, that process stops until you can dedicate that attention back to the patching process. And it may be a limitation of a team dependency on a single DBA for patching. So if you became the best DBA on your team that does the patching, because every time you do it, those servers are brought back online and there's never any issues. But when another DBA does it, there's always issues. So you're kind of pigeonholed or stuck into patching, doing patching all the time. You definitely don't want to be there. There's, I'm sure you have other things that you want to be working on more strategic things uh, so this is kind of a, a thing that patching manually can if you've done a really good job at it you could be stuck doing patching for the rest of your career at that at that location ansible allows us to be consistent and do an identical patching sequence every single time so it's going to orchestrate that patching sequence the same way it doesn't matter if if you're running that playbook or if uh the other DBA is running the playbook, or maybe it's not even the DBA team any longer. Maybe it's just a, a team that specifically does patching and they want to add the SQL servers into their workflow, uh, but there was just no tool to do that before you learned uh, how to use Ansible. So you'll ensure that it's consistent no matter who, who does it because it's the same playbook and it has 
basically your checklist built into the the playbook and each step is done just like if you did it there's minimal downtime precise timing reduces service interruption so ansible is going to handle our reboots it's going to handle our uh checking to make sure that sql server is back online so it's going once it does a restart it's going to make sure that that secondary is back online and then it's going to keep attempting to uh, connect to sql server until it gets a successful uh, connection and then it's going to actually validate that the ag is in a good state and it reduces errors common mistakes and um, the 10 steps and those are really at the high level 10 steps there could be a lot more steps that you you actually go through but if you've depending on if you try to hand that off and you could even make mistakes i know sometimes we each of us make mistakes but it's very rare uh, but if you have everything in the playbook then you you don't have to keep it up here in your head you've got it in your playbook and we can incorporate uh, all of the validation and safety checks that we're going to do as part of the playbook that we define it's going to uh, verify that the patch file checksum that we're we're using uh, is correct. So, in in this case, we're going to place our patch exe out on a file share, and then we're going to generate that checksum for that exe, and we're going to take that checksum and use it as a variable inside of our playbook, so that when we run that playbook or whoever runs that playbook, the first thing that Ansible is going to do is to generate that checksum against that exe and make sure that it matches what we're expecting because we want to make sure that nobody's going in and replaces that exe with something else that uh, could cause bad things it ensures as part of the validation we're going to ensure version compatibility so we're going to make sure that 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 patch that we've put out there and and added to our playbook is meant for the version of sql server that we were intending to patch so it could be that somebody put a SQL Server 2019 patch out there, but our AG is built on 2022. The first thing Ansible is going to do is make sure that our desired build version is compatible with the, the intended instances. So the, the, the first thing it's going to make sure is that first build number, like in the case of SQL Server 2019, that would be a 15 and then SQL Server 2022 is 16. So if those two don't match, then the play will stop and you're going to get a message that says, hey, this is not the right patch for that instance. It's going to then identify the primary replica. So we all know that AG primary could be on any of our secondaries if it's set up as synchronized and failover is automatic. So we don't want to have to always now, we don't want to hard code the primary in our playbook or as a variable. We're going to let Ansible go and figure out the state of the AG. And that includes figuring out which, which replica is the primary so that we do it. We patch it last. And the role that we build is going to be item potent. So if in our case, if one of the secondaries has already been patched, maybe your Windows admin team has already patched it then we won't do anything to that secondary uh, if it's at the version that we we expect so in any changes as far as we make with the failover modes ansible is going to go ahead and take care of that uh, for us as well kind of the approach that we'll take is the we're going to build in the rolling update steps into our uh, playbook and roles so it's first off it's going to do all the validation for our AG health, and then it's going to update the secondaries, fell over to a secondary, and then update the old primary. This is kind of what's going to happen uh, whenever we uh, run our process against the each secondary. It's going to, like we just talked about, change the fellover mode. It's going to set to manual if needed. Step two, it's going to install the update, execute the patch installation, Three, it will reboot the server. Now, this is an option that we can turn on or off as part of our variables. And then step four, it's going to verify availability. After the restart, we're going to confirm that SQL Server is responsive and we can uh, connect to that instance. And then 
what's going to happen whenever we fell over to the primary. We're actually going to treat it now that it's a secondary. We're going to treat it exactly the same way as we did our other secondaries. We're going to go ahead and fell over to a healthy secondary that has been patched and then wait until that our new secondary is in a synchronized state. Then we're going to update it and then we're going to fail back if that's our intention. Next, we're going to run through the final checks and do a cleanup. We're going to validate the AG state, verify SQL Server versions. So if we've patched to a SQL Server 2022 CU18, we're going to make sure that all our instances in that, or all of our replicas in that AG have been patched to the same level. And then we're going to remove any temp files like that. The EXE gets copied over to each server. Uh, I, know, I don't know about you, but we've all opened up the downloads folder or maybe C temp on each one of the instances and there's just years worth of of patching exes there we're going to go ahead and let ansible clean that up for us instead of just leaving that out there so again save time with automation we're going to improve reliability and we're also going to enable you to be uh, able to focus on other areas in the uh, dba space so if you want to learn more and get the details of everything we just went through, I head out to that blog post that's on your screen there. And then at the bottom of that blog post, you'll see a form. If you want those other two resources, I just go ahead and fill that out and I will send those over to you through your email. And then also I'll send you any updates of any, any uh, further blog post. I would be interested in if you've already gotten started with Ansible in a kind of a Windows environment, let me know in, down in the comments of how you're using it and what you maybe what you like what you dislike and also are how you're currently uh, doing your patching for the ags so if you like this be sure to subscribe because i will have additional videos in this series coming out soon and then i'll give it a give it a thumbs up i'll see you uh, in the next one thanks